When we go to a supermarket, we always buy things using standard values. In other words, we always take 1 kilogram of rice or 200 milliliters of fruit juice. Fruits are sometimes counted using the unit dozen. One dozen means 12 of something. These are terms used in everyday life. But what if I want to measure something in terms of the number of tiny particles present in it? Let me explain this in detail. Looking at this pure gold, can you tell me how many gold atoms are present in this? Or wait, looking at this glass of water, can you tell me how many water molecules are present in it? You will probably say that it's practically impossible to calculate the number of atoms or molecules in these examples. But astonishingly, chemistry has an answer to this as well. That brings us to the concept of mole. What does it mean? It's very easy. One mole of anything has 6.022 times 10 raised to 23 atoms or molecules or particles present inside it. Isn't this number huge? If I have to write down the zeros, this is how big the number will look. One mole of anything has these many particles. Now let's say we take a substance which has three times the number of particles here. Then we say that this is three moles of this substance. And what if we have a substance which has eight times the number of particles here? That's correct. It will be eight moles of that substance. That's the basic concept of a mole of any substance. Let's see if you've understood the concept well. Now here's one mole of this pure gold. How many atoms does it have? Yes, as it's one mole, it will have 6.02 times 10 raised to 23 atoms in it. Similarly, one mole of pure water will have 6.022 times 10 raised to 23 water molecules inside it. So is this how we define one mole? 6.022 times 10 raised to 23 atoms or molecules or particles? Well, that's the simplest way to understand it. That means if we take for example a bag containing 6.022 times 10 raised to 23 hydrogen atoms, then can we say it's one mole of hydrogen? Yes, that's right. Similarly, 6.022 times 10 raised to 23 molecules of any compound like copper sulfate is one mole of copper sulfate. Simple, isn't it? Wait, we have just understood the concept of mole in simple words. But we are yet to take a look at the scientific definition of one mole. Scientifically, one mole is defined as the amount of substance that contains the same number of atoms, molecules or particles as there are atoms in 12 grams of carbon-12. Yes, even I didn't understand it when we read it for the first time. Let me break it down for you. Let me remove this definition from the screen. What we have on the screen now is 12 grams of carbon-12. Carbon-12 is one of the isotopes of carbon. Now 12 grams of carbon-12 is what was taken as a standard. What's so special about this? Can you guess the number of atoms here? Yes, it's 6.022 times 10 raised to 23 atoms. Now that you've understood this, let me repeat the definition for you. One mole is defined as the amount of substance that contains the same number of atoms, molecules or particles as there are atoms in 12 grams of carbon-12. Did you understand the definition now? It consists of two simple parts actually. It tells us that this part is equal to this part. The number of particles in one mole of a substance is equal to the number of atoms in 12 grams of carbon-12. That's it. That's all the definition tells us. Many people get confused when it comes to the concept of mole. Let's take many more examples to be absolutely sure. How about taking the same example of pure gold and pure water? When we say one mole of pure gold, then according to our definition, it will have the same number of atoms as the number of atoms in 12 grams of carbon-12. That means one mole of gold will have 6.022 times 10 raised to 23 atoms of gold. Similarly, water will also have the same number of molecules as the number of atoms in 12 grams of carbon-12. That means it will have 6.022 times 10 raised to 23 molecules of water. Remember, the definition uses carbon-12 as a standard. It is used to compare the number of atoms or molecules or particles 
present in the substance. But what's the mystery behind this number? A scientist named Lorenzo Romano Amedio Carlo Avagadro came up with this concept. I know the name is long, so we will address him as Avagadro. So the number 6.022 times 10 raised to 23 is called as the Avogadro's number. It is just a number used to represent quantities. It's similar to how we use the word pair for 2 or the word dozen to represent 12. Similarly, Avogadro's number is the term used to represent 6.022 times 10 raised to 23 number of any entity. So can we go to a shop and say, I want Avogadro's number of chocolates? Of course we can. The only problem is that the shop won't really have those many chocolates and neither will we be able to carry them back home. So getting back to the concept, Avogadro's number is just another number used to represent quantities. But the number is so huge that using this in daily life is not practically possible and advisable. Then why does the number exist if we do not use it? Yes, the number is not commonly used in daily life by us However, it comes to the rescue of chemists that work with atoms, molecules, electrons and many such small entities. That is the reason why it's used to calculate one mole of any substance. Let's talk about one last concept. We know that one mole of carbon-12 is 12 grams of carbon-12. That's because 12 grams of carbon-12 has the Avogadro's number of atoms. Now let me ask you a question. If you answer this correctly, it means you've understood the concept of mole. What will be the mass of one mole of pure gold? Will it be 12 grams? The answer is no. It will not be 12 grams. Note that in both cases, the number of atoms is the same, but the mass of an atom of gold is different from the mass of an atom of carbon-12. Hence, the mass of one mole of gold will definitely be different from the mass of one mole of carbon-12. So, one mole of gold weighs around 196.97 grams. That is because mass of gold atom is different from the mass of carbon-12 atoms. Similarly, one mole of water will have the Avogadro's number of molecules, but it will not weigh 12 grams. So, if we take one mole of water and find its mass, we get the answer as 18.015 grams of water. And I'm sure you know why. For the sake of comparison, if we take one mole of gold, one mole of silver and one mole of copper, then all of them will have the same number of atoms in them. That is 6.022 times 10 raised to 23 atoms. This number is the Avogadro's number. However, the mass of each one will be different. That's because the mass of individual atoms that make up these elements is different.